In 1954, Brown versus Board of Education overturned the separate but equal policy in schools, and the 1964 Civil Rights Act ended public racial discrimination. But although the federal government mandated integration, attitudes hadn't changed. And in the South, Jim Crow continued to haunt college football. As late as 1969, the southernmost teams in the SEC were still completely white. A lot of great players uh, from the South were uh, either, they either had to play at the uh, historically black institutions, or if they wanted to play in the major universities, they had to go out west or go up north. So a lot of talent was leaving the Southeastern Conference. The South was starting to see some of their programs go down a little bit, but the University of Alabama maintained their dominance. They won three national championships in 1961, 64, and 65, and should have won in 66. So what this did was it created in the minds of Alabama football fans and fans in the SEC the idea that you didn't need to desegregate. Not only was Alabama enjoying success with all white football teams, but the state was governed by a man who deliberately played the race card to win his election, and who kept a close public relationship with Coach Paul Bryant. Clearly that was George Wallace's way of uh, advertising, uh, see what an all-white football team can do. What we didn't know was that the, the relationship between Bear Bryant and George Wallace was very uneasy that in fact uh, Bryant had been needling and pushing and, and probing, trying to integrate the Alabama football team for many years. We were conspiring as much as we could without rattling the governor's situation. And I think as it speaks well of Coach Bryant, we're a state institution, the governor is not ready for integration yet. A lot of our funds come from the state of Alabama, from the capital, and we would like to be successful, but we're going to hurt the general public, the students and the faculty. Despite championships in the early 60s, the racial factor was beginning to hurt Alabama's stature. Bryant's team finished the 1966 season unbeaten and untied, yet placed third in the polls. The nation was simply not going to reward an all-white team that had become the flagship for segregation. By the late 1960s, the Crimson Tide was turning, and after a subpar 69 season, they were no longer reminiscent of a championship team. In 69, there were people calling for his resignation. He said the game had passed him by. It was time for Coach Bryant to go. We knew we had to get bigger, stronger, faster players and a large majority of the bigger, stronger, faster players were black. We did have an African-American on the team, but he was a freshman and didn't dress. Uh, Wilbur Jackson, I think it was coming, and Coach Bryant was, you know, allowing it to happen slowly. It was finally time for Bryant to make his move, to convince people that in order to start winning again, Alabama was going to have to fully commit to integration. But to do so, he needed to set an example. The number one team in the 60s, USC, had a fully integrated roster, including a black quarterback and a black assistant coach. One day, prior to the 1970 season, head coach John McKay asked his assistant Craig Furtick for a lift to LAX airport for an unexpected meeting. In walks Coach Bryant with that houndstooth hat on that's back here. And uh, he uh, walked in and they, hi Paul, hi John. Uh, Paul, what's this about? John, how do y'all like to come down to Birmingham and play us in the opener? Coach says, what are you going to pay me? And he says, $150,000. Coach smokes his cigar and he says, I'll tell you what, Paul, we'll come down and play you in the opener. If you'll come out the following year and play us in L.A. and I'll give you 250000 And I'm sitting there and they said, bring us another round there. And I sat in on history and I didn't realize it at the time. On September 12, 1970, USC met Alabama on Legion's Field for what would become the first integrated college football game played in Alabama. I listened to that game on radio, and uh, you know, of course, we, we all know Southern Cal had uh, a bit of a field day in that game. Sam Cunningham just ran up and down the field. We played eight linebackers trying to find one that could tackle him, and we never found one that could tackle him. <laughs> Cunningham ran for 135 yards and scored two touchdowns on only 12 carries, 
The final score was 42 to 21. The Crimson Tide had lost the football game, but was starting to win the war on segregation. Bryant reacted to this game um, by shaking John McKay's hand at halftime and thanking him for bringing his team all the way out to Birmingham to help his program, quote, help our program, end quote. That sort of signal in the beginning for, for uh, uh, recruitment of African-American players in the Southeastern Conference. And I know a lot has been written, a lot of speculation, but uh, I don't have any question in my mind that uh, it was all planned by Coach Bryant. He's got a spot in Alabama like Martin Luther King does in the world. <laughs> He left, a, he left a legacy that will never be matched.